Good morning. Welcome to worship at Community in Christ Lutheran Church on this third Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Lisa Beery, and Pastor Michael and I are glad that each of you are joining us here today while loving God and loving neighbor by keeping physical distance. A special good morning and happy Father's Day to all of the dads out there and to all of the men who love and care for us as nurturing dads do. We continue to be grateful for the gift of technology that brings us together and for the many people listed on our announcement slide helping us make this worship experience with you possible. Specifically, we want to express our gratitude to the North Carolina Synod staff for providing the sermon for today's worship. In real time, Pastor Michael and I are concluding a week of Sabbath rest today. That means these announcements, as well as many parts of the service, were recorded a week ago. For the most up-to-date news and information, please be sure to check the weekly Take Two email on Tuesday. As a reminder, we will not be celebrating Holy Communion via Zoom today. The celebration will resume next week, June 28th. We would very much like for you to join us for worship next Sunday, June 28th, live streaming on our Facebook and YouTube pages at 10 a.m. Our service today begins with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is 
strong, God is our ruler yet. This is my Father's world, why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King, let heaven ring, God reigns, let earth be glad. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 through 13. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in. And I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed. For they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise to the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. Psalm 69, verse 7 through 18. Surely, for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind, and your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies. Deliver me. Should we, it's reading from Romans 6, should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means, how can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. 
For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. <laughs> gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a servant above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the servant like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we are so thankful for another opportunity to worship you an opportunity to allow your words from your scriptures and your proclamation this day to order our footsteps so that we might be doing the work, following the path that you have called us to do. Give us the boldness and the braveness and the inspiration and the excitement, Lord, to follow your way, understanding the cost of discipleship. Let us have no fear. And, O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So our gospel text this morning is Jesus speaking, and it continues the part that we heard last week, where, where Jesus has identified the 12 in the book of Matthew and is sending them out. Jesus tells them to go out, don't take nothing with you to go out and don't anticipate the things that you will need because God will provide them. Jesus was calling us not to go out into the world dependent upon the things that we could take with us, but to be dependent wholly on God. Not to be dependent upon the things that we could physically grab, acquire, and take with us, 
but to be wholly dependent upon the move, the ways, and the economy of God. Beloved, if we could just understand that as a people, that it is not about the things that we can acquire, the knowledge that we can acquire, the training that we can acquire, but it is more about who God is calling us to be. That may require formal education or informal education or experience, but none of that matters without the presence of God's holiness and the presence of God going before us and reading the things that are ahead. So as Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's telling them these things, he wants them to understand the cost of discipleship. That to follow someone, it, it ought to mean that, that it is clear to others whom you are following, a, a common cultural experience in that day and time. The, the hearers of that knew exactly what Jesus was speaking of. Because they could identify people based upon the lives that they live, the way that they dress, as to whom they were following us, following, whom they were following. So Jesus says the same to these disciples, that you, you ought to be able to clearly understand whom you are following, which will define what you will be doing. Jesus gives them the authority to cast out de demons, proclaim the good news, to tell people that the kingdom of heaven has come near, cure the sick. All of those things sound wonderful, but Jesus wants them to know the weight of that. That indeed there will be those who reject, who persecute, who challenge. There will be those who don't believe the things that they are saying, but Jesus is telling them that doesn't matter. That's not what's important. The important thing is you to do as I told you. And that, yes, it might be dangerous in the ways of this world. It might be dangerous in the ways that, that, that seem to horrify and scare us in this world, that, that there may be some temporal damage done. There may be some relationships lost. There may be some accusations, some insults, or even some violence done to us simply by proclaiming God's truth. Jesus wants them to know that it doesn't matter, that all of those things might be true, but that doesn't matter because the greatest thing God is preoccupied is not that this temporal expression will be whole and healthy, but that our soul, our soul will be okay. Jesus says it's unimportant if the person can come and they can kill this physical body. But it's those who are soul snatchers, who steal you away from God, that have the true weight. And those are the ones that we need to be worried about. That as Jesus talked about coming into this world and, and dividing the world, even in families, I believe that, that Jesus was talking about true hearts for God. That there was no longer this expectation that simply because of a bloodline that you were promised eternity with God. That God was asking for true hearts and true believers. So in that, that even some families would be divided because all would not have a heart for God. The weight of that, the recognition of that was so countercultural, so opposite of the things that the chosen children of Israel thought were true. It must have been shocking to hear, daunting even, as Jesus is calling them, commissioning them to go out into the world, allowing them to see the whole truth, allowing them to gain a greater understanding of what that means. What did Jesus expect of them? Jesus expected them to follow the way of God. In these difficult times where we are facing isolation through quarantine because of COVID-19, where we have unrest because we have a presidential election coming up in the fall, where matters of social justice are coming to the forefront because of video that show things that happen that ought not happen to unarmed citizens of this country. 
And in the wake of those things, a, a new day seems to be dawning where we are creating legislation and, and training and opportunities to create a relationship between police and community that will have them working along in a way that reconciles that community so that all will be working for the greater good. My hope is that more will be protected, whether they serve on the police force or they, they are black and brown bodies, that, that more will be protected because they have a mutual respect and appreciation for each other as they come together for the common good. My hope is that that will happen in my lifetime, but I'm a little leery. I have seen us have these, these seasons where justice seems to be right there and then it slips away. But what I know as a believer God is still in charge. God is still calling me to do and to be in this world with COVID-19, social unrest, political unrest. And God is calling me to help those who follow Christ to understand that Christ expects us to work on being the reconciled body of Christ. Christ wants us to be about the restoration business. Christ wants us to stand in the face of injustice, to stand in the face of hurt and isolation, mental illness and all types of things and stand and speak God's truth recognizing that some will reject what we hear. Some will walk away. Some will, will not be drawn to the good news of Jesus Christ. But that should never stop us from being, being preoccupied with proclaiming it daily, daily. Jesus's disciples weren't just Jesus's disciples on the Sabbath. They weren't just the disciples when they happened to be in the temple. Seven days a week, people could see them and identify who they were following. My hope, beloved, is this day that we hear that echoed in the depths of our spirit, in the deepest parts of our hearts, that we are called in such a way that people ought to recognize and see Jesus upon us. See the boldness of Jesus. See the love of Jesus. See the righteousness of Jesus. See the justice of Jesus. I think we can do that. <laughs> I know we can do that with God's help that God will provide us just as God did that ragtag bunch of disciples with everything we need, even if we can't see anything in our hands or anything in our suitcases or our luggage. As we go out into this world, we go confidently because God has equipped us and provided us with the things that we need and the opportunities that will be available to us with resources that we can't even imagine to accomplish God's work. Go this day, beloved, confident in the God we serve, not in the things that we have. Amen.
us now confess our shared faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen called into unity with one another and with the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. During this time of pause and decreased activity, renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protecting God. Sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Law enforcement officers, social workers, refugee agencies, justice organizations. May they be able to confidently and humbly serve the people entrusted to their care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, many of your people are tired burdened by extra work, fears of financial distress, anxiety about health, worries about the powers of systemic racism. Help us to find moments of Sabbath each day. As we lean into your love and grace, raise us up, renew our spirits to face these challenges with confident hope grounded in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who love and nurture children, especially fathers and grandfathers, godfathers and uncles. We thank you for the men in our lives who have provided meaningful relationships and have been positive role models through the love, care, and guidance shared with those around them. We also ask you to provide comfort and love for those who have lost their fathers strength for fathers who have lost a child, peace and reconciliation for those who struggle with broken relationships with their fathers, and encouragement for those men who do not have children but strive to be an example for the next generation. Bless all who have fathered us in their role as mentor and guide. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, your peace and power can do miraculous things. We ask your presence to be made known to all who yearn for wholeness and renewal. Especially we pray for Carla, Gary, Suzette, Greg, Bertie, Claudia, Jim, Lori, the De Benedictus family, Martin, Joan, Jan, and all those impacted by COVID-19. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Now let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. At this time in our service, we ask you to think about and name all of the gifts you give to the glory of God. This is also a space while we listen to the gift of music where you can share of your tithes and your offerings through going to the Donate Now button on the church's website or by writing a check to mail in to the office this week.
grateful for all the gifts that God has first given us. Let us pray. Make us thankful every day, O God, for the gifts that we have received from your bounty. Guide us to use these offerings to your glory for the health of your people and this creation. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Really?
Have been by the mark. By the mark. 